Biblia que propia para pasarle. Algunos de ustedes lo han recibido. Quiero leerlo para que no me extralimite. Eh, el centro hispano urbano en Los Ángeles. Eso es una realidad desde el 1 de octubre de 1970. En su reunión constituyente celebrada en Green Bay, Wisconsin, del 24 al 26 de septiembre de 1970, el Caucus Hispano de la Convención Bautista Americana aprobó el inicio del proyecto y para tener su sede en Los Ángeles, California. Reside en este lugar la mayor concentración de población hispana hablante en los Estados Unidos. Para ser exactos, había un millón y medio de personas en los apellidos hispanos en 1960. Asistieron a esta reunión líderes hispanos, tanto de pastores como laicos de Puerto Rico y de Well, we ex expect him to be a, the type that can eventually be a star, uh, Vern, in the National Football League. He has all the characteristic of an outstanding defensive lineman. He's 6'5 and 250 pounds. He's got real good speed and an excellent athlete. Uh, with these qualities to start with, then uh, you expect great things. I would expect that uh, you once again went for the athlete uh, instead of uh, drafting by position. Yes, we did. We always, of course, as you know, pick the best athletes available. and. Uh, we feel there was no doubt about Smith's athletic ability. He has this type of ability, and uh, we are hoping that uh, he will follow the pattern of Dwayne Thomas and Calvin Hill. You know, I look back over the past two years, and uh, you, of course, ha have a list of uh, players in numerical order of how you grade them, and uh, Dwayne Thomas and Calvin Hill were both uh, in the top ten. Uh, is Smith in that category, despite the fact you picked him 24? Uh, yes, rather? yes, actually, Smith was in our top ten again uh, this year, and. Uh, from the, for this reason, of course, we're encouraged. Ike, when did you learn you were the Cowboys' number two choice? Well, I was sitting in the lobby waiting for the draft, the number. So um, I didn't really know what round I was going in until coach came and notified me. And I was really happy. I wanted to just holler out, you know. Have the Cowboys always been your favorite team? Well, yes, yes, because I like the way uh, the brand of ball they play and the personnel. Do you feel uh, with their eight good defensive backs they have now, you'll be able to make the club next year as a defensive back? Well, I think I will because I have confidence in myself. Therefore, I think I can make the team. What's your height, your weight, and your time in the dash? Well, my height is six two and a half. My weight is 195. And I've ran six, four or five in the 40 yard jet.
Dear Mr. Mavis, in the ensuing weeks since you took office, I have determined that my resignation as a member of the Tarrant County Hospital District Board of Managers would be more appropriate at the present time than by waiting until the expiration of my term. Although I had earlier agreed to serve out this term, it would now appear that the interest of the hospital district could best be served if your new appointee could be installed and have the opportunity to help in the development of the forthcoming proposals for the renovation and construction of the facilities at John Peter Smith Hospital location. Well, you glad to be with Baltimore? Yes, I am. I always like Baltimore, and uh, I'm a great fan of theirs. And I always looked at them play on television, but I never thought I would be uh, playing with Johnny United with some great stars like that. I understand you had a conversation with your mother this morning, and she said, Tom, I didn't know you were that good. <laughs> yes, I know. She, <laughs> she called me and congratulated me and everything, and uh, she was really surprised, you know, and she told me that. And uh, I told her, I'm not good, Mom. I'm great. So that was about it, you know. Well, uh, anticipating uh, using this statement, then you don't anticipate any trouble breaking into the Colt lineup? No, I don't. Else they wouldn't have picked me number one if they didn't think I was good enough to break in it. You know. Well, of course, in Bobby Boy, they've got a great defensive coach and other coaches too. So I really know you're looking forward to your career. Who has been your uh, idol in the pro ranks right, as you've grown well, up? Well, mostly Lombardi and um, Winfro, Mel Winfro, Dallas Cowboys, been pretty good. You know. You've established quite a record at North Texas State too, haven't you? Yes, uh, it was all right, I guess. I thought I should have done better, but uh, they said it was all right, yeah. Uh, I had uh, played in seven games this year. I got hurt, you know, I had seven interceptions and for about 132 yards this year. But last year, I thought it was a pretty good season. I had six interceptions for 250-some yards for three touchdowns. So. Yes, sir, I guess it must have been, I'm 69 years old, and it must have been 61 years ago that I saw this great show, this great catch rope show they used to call. They call them rodeos down here, and when I went to California, I got confused. They called them rodeo. Then they called the thing radio when I first went on before we had TV, and we, we used to say radio and rodeo. They're all the same because they throw the bull in both places. That's an old joke. <laughs> so are there any other questions, Jay? The questions in the minds of Texans is, did the governor and certain members of the legislature sell their vote for personal profit? Did they gain anything of value as defined by the Constitution in exchange for their vote or official influence? This is a state question and not a federal question, and the people of Texas are entitled to know the facts. I want to make very clear that I am not charging any person with unethical or criminal conduct. I am merely stating that the public is entitled to know the facts. The rumors that are running rampant must be put to rest. The board motion that was approved yesterday is still insistent on maintaining strict discipline in our schools and in no way limits our ability to do just that maintaining an atmosphere that's conducive to learning, maintaining strict discipline in our schools has been, is, and will continue to be the policy of our school system. It's important for us to point out, I think, this morning that our policy uh, has never been opposed to the principles involved in the wearing of armbands. 
In fact, those of you who were on the scene last October will remember that uh, we encouraged and we continue to encourage freedom of expression in an appropriate classroom setting on all matters that are of importance to those concerned. Our armband prohibition resulted from incidents that we as administrators considered to be disruptive and from situations that we as experienced administrators felt might be potentially disruptive. Well, I think first of all I would say that, uh, that those kinds of considerations, uh, in our view, are local concerns that the local board and the local administration would have to be uh, uh, the principal decision maker upon. Uh, we have tried to, uh, to increase awareness of some of the needs of students. We've tried to uh, do some work toward development of long-range goals for elementary and secondary education in Texas. Uh, we've tried to give some leadership in uh, assessing what the needs are of some of the students, particularly uh, disadvantaged students, handicapped students, students of uh, various minority populations. Uh, I would say information-wise and trying to give leadership in it is our major effort and uh, trying to avoid interference in some of the legitimate affairs of local school districts and their constituted authority. Mr. Crouch mentioned uh, uh, that if there was a law violation uh, that it should be prosecuted. Uh, I would certainly agree that uh, any violations of the law uh, ought to be prosecuted. I did note, however, that uh, Mr. Crouch uh, pointed out uh, very clearly that uh, he was not accusing anybody of violation of the law and thought that it should not be a partisan matter, and I agree with him uh, on the latter that uh, it shouldn't be a partisan matter. Certainly we had uh, uh, human beings involved uh, who are not infallible and who sometimes make some mistakes. I think clearly here they were mistakes of judgment. But shouldn't men in these positions be virtually infallible? We would hope they are, but uh, as you and I of course know, Jim, uh, uh, there are a few people who are completely infallible. This is a mistake. Uh, the thing that we need to do now is to get about uh, our business of setting the mistake straight.